Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, I'm Kyla McLaughlin. I'm the chair for the seminar today. Um, I'm the director of Tyndall Manchester, which is a climate change research centre here at the university. Um, and over the last couple of years, um, I've been working on behalf of the university as our, our rep from UOM to help set up the Energy Innovation Agency for Greater Manchester. And I'm delighted to be joined today by um, David Sheely, uh, who's the director of the agency, and Dan Dickinson, who is business development lead at the agency. And they're going to talk us through a bit of background about the agency, its purpose, um, what it's trying to achieve, before getting a little bit more into some, some detail um, for how they're thinking about engaging with innovators and how you can potentially get involved with the agency itself. Um, we will take questions throughout. I think there's a way that you can send a question. You can tap it in if you would like, and I will put that to David and Dan once they've talked through some slides. But actually, um, my preference would be for you to wait until the end of the presentations and pop your hand up and we'll get you to unmute and actually ask your question so that we can have a bit more of a discussion and a, and a kind of back and forth. But it's, it's up to you which one of those you want to go for. Um, so without, without further ado, I'll hand over to David to, to kick us off. Thanks, Carly. Hi, everyone. I'm David Sheely, Director of the Energy Innovation Agency. I'm just going to start presenting now. Okay, can, can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. Thanks, David. Okay, great. Thanks. Hi. Yeah, welcome to the Energy Innovation Agency. Um, <coughs> uh, here's a summary of what we'll be talking about today. Um, so we've got a three-part um, webinar presentation. So in part one, um, we will talk, we will introduce the agency in the context. Um, talk a little bit more about what we've been doing over the last six months and where we're where we're heading um, and then my colleague Dan Dickinson uh, will will pick up from part two talking about some of our energy innovators and some of the latest developments and then we'll in part three Dan will also um, highlight our our up and our forthcoming energy event um, which is taking place in Manchester on the 28th of April so lots happening and uh, very pleased to be here and be, be, have been invited today. So uh, without further ado, uh, we'll start with the agency introduction. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna, there we go, right. <clears throat> so context and challenge. Um, uh, yeah, so, well, we've obviously got a climate crisis at the moment, um, no surprise, COP26. Um, obviously, <clears throat> um, in Scotland, it was about getting people to agree to reduce carbon emissions so we can try and curb the uh, global temperature increase to w below 1.5 degrees or keep it to one within 1.5 degrees. Um, that's already looking quite, look quite difficult. Um, the UK has obviously got a legally binding commitment to reach net zero by 2050 and obviously locally in the GM city region we have our own <coughs> um, carbon neutral target of 2038 with other cities sort of following suit. Um, and then on top of that we have um, the recent off-gem energy price cap increase, a 54% increase in, in energy um, with um, increasing issues around fuel policy poverty with with residents and, and citizens uh, specifically in the UK and, and further um, so what are the challenges we face well we've obviously got a climate emergency um, and at current levels of um, carbon emissions uh, we will have blown our entire carbon budget within the next sort of six five or six years um, up to 2100 so business as usual is not really an option um, like like I say, we've got an energy crisis um, that's creating a cost of living crisis. Uh, <clears throat> there's increased demand and reliance on electricity, especially as we try and decarbonize um, our economy. Uh, and then ob obviously we have an energy trilemma. So we're trying to create clean, affordable and secure energy supplies that match our 
our policies and our our, our lifestyle changes. Um, we also have an energy innovation gap. So we have a need for solutions that aren't necessarily market ready. We know if we carry on with business as usual, existing uh, solutions and technologies aren't gonna help us reach our 2038 carbon neutral target. Um, so this leads nicely into why the Energy Innovation Agency was created in the GM city region. Um, so we are a public private partnership created by eight partners. Um, uh, university, corporate and public sector partners, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, and our vision is to accelerate the energy transition towards our carbon neutral target, um, increasing the deployment of innovative energy solutions in the GM city region and beyond, uh, obviously to speed up the reduction of carbon emissions. We have four key aims, innovation exploitation, decarbonisation, rapid commercialization and investment. And um, our key objectives are <coughs> connecting innovators and innovative products to businesses, um, utilizing the world-class research support of the three leading universities in Manchester, uh, creating real world test bed in the GM city region um, in the commercial environment to allow new products and, and uh, models to be demonstrated, so there could be pilot projects, demonstration project, projects, etc. And, and also accessing business support um, to enable products to reach the, mar the market in the most effective and efficient way. Um, so this is the structure of our focus areas and services. Like I mentioned, we're, we're a public-private partnership um, currently, funded by the eight GM partners. Um, we have a board. Uh, representing each of those partners with an independent chair. Uh, and we have a tactical group that sits beneath the board, which is like an operations group uh, that meets regularly to review innovations and progress with projects and take things further. Um, and we also have the opportunity to create, create like a, a working group or a steering group of end users and investors. So that would be the agency, an innovator and a specific partner who can offer uh, specific advice around, around that particular innovation. We have four focus areas. So uh, the largest one we have is the decarbonisation of heat. Specifically, we're focusing on that now in year one. Uh, so we're looking at buildings decarbonisation, retrofit and smart energy projects. And uh, Dan will talk a bit later on about our launch event coming up on the 28th of April, but uh, for that, we're focusing on the um, <clears throat> decarbonisation of heat in non-domestic buildings. Our second focus area is energy generation and storage. So that's things like battery storage, fuel cells, renewable energy, solar PV, wind, etc. cetera. Um, energy diversity and flexibility. So that's things like um, digital software platforms, energy trading platforms, peer-to-peer -peer trading, uh, grid services, um, dynamic uh, frequency response and so on. And then finally, we have low carbon transport. So that's not just electric vehicles and electric vehicle charging, but that can include hydrogen fuel cells and other, and other forms of um, low carbon transport. In terms of services, uh, our core service is the energy innovator validation and scale up service. Um, so that's essentially an in impartial support service for, for innovators, be they from within GM or outside GM. Uh, so we can offer them support to help scale up their businesses. And I'll talk a bit more about how we do that in detail in a minute. Um, we also offer challenge events and we've obviously got our launch and challenge event coming up on the 28th of April. So that's where we can highlight specific focus areas to draw in innovators around a particular focus area challenge. And, and then finally, we've got um, sort of enabling innovative partnerships. So we can create um, innovation consortias. So that would be the agency and innovator and one of the university partners to bring in public sector R&D funding uh, for projects, which we can then feed back through the corporate partners into uh, the commercial sector. Now, here's a summary of our <coughs> innovative validation and scale up service. Um, so we have 
um, three core principles behind the service, which is um, discover, develop and um, deploy. And essentially we have a four stage process here when we speak to innovators. Uh, every innovator has a different journey, um, but uh, <coughs> essentially stage one, where we first meet innovators, this is our customer engagement sort or triage stage where we sort of draw out the ideas and, and go through a feasibility assessment. Uh, following that, once we've got more understanding of the innovation in the company, uh, we would then move them on to stage two, where we start to develop the commercial model. Um, and then uh, at stage three, where we start to fall back more on the support from the partners, we can we can do what well, we've got kind of three things we can do there. We've got the tactical group that we can um, liaise with around that specific innovator for support and advice. We can even set up, um, like I say, I said earlier, a steering group or a, a working group around a specific product so that um, specific partners can support areas that they're expert in with a particular innovator. And then finally, we've got additional corporates, national programs like BASE and Innovate UK and, and finance houses, potentially people like the Municipal Bonds Agency, where we can um, potentially provide um, wider support network. Um, and then at stage four is where we actually deliver the support. So I've got in here some examples. I mean, this is, this is a, <coughs> these are examples, but say for example, um, We've got uh, business growth services. We can offer small scale investment support, IP support. Uh, that's through the growth company. We have the universities who can provide support through consortia grant projects for proof testing, TRL development and IP development. Uh, Bruntwood can offer commercial demonstrator projects, pilots and deployment projects. Uh, SSE and Hitachi uh, can provide access to innovation investment. So that might be direct investment in, in startups or SMEs, um, but they can also offer adoption and deployment projects. And then of course, the, we've got um, the CA, GMCA can offer access to pilot and deployment projects, but then also policy and pilot project support for mass adoption. So within, within that, so sort of that support network, we, we can bring in sort of the technology um, market and uh, the technology market and policy levers to help support innovators as much as possible. Um, here's a summary of our partners. So like I just mentioned, we've got Bruntwood, uh, we've got the three corporates, Bruntwood, Hitachi and SSE, uh, the growth company, uh, GMCA and the three universities. And so we've got a very diverse um, and broad um, skills base and, and expertise. They're, we're independently chaired um, in, at the board level by um, a chair from Electricity Northwest um, and it's unique collaboration so we think we're in a good place at, at the right time to, to make a big impact on, on Manchester and the wider UK. Here's a summary of our strategic fit so I mentioned earlier about um, levers, market policy and technology levers. Um, <coughs> this sort of shows the fit where the energy innovation falls into things um, through steering groups and opportunities for research and development, product validation, funding support, product refinement, demonstration and commercialization. And again, following the sort of three principles of discover, develop and deploy, um, we've got, uh, and with our unique partner collaboration, we've got a, um, a really good really good access into um, all aspects of um, the development of, of various innovations. And there on the right, we've got the program. So they kind of summarize our focus areas. So energy generation, storage, decarbonization of heat, low carbon transport and energy diversity and flexibility. So progress today, what, what, have, we, what have we been up to? Where are we going? Um, so Dan and I joined the agency in sort of Q4 last year. The, the agency was talked about probably for a couple of years or more now um, since the five-year environment plan. And um, we, we are, <coughs> what we've done in the last six months is to, uh, we've, we've created the business plan to show a pathway to creating a self-sustaining organization within three years. 
Um, we've already started our innovator validation scale up service. And we've got a number of innovators we're already working with, and, and Dan's going to cover some of those a bit later on. Um, we've started attracting innovators from within GM, but also outside of GM. So that means we can bring in um, kind of any, any innovator into GM to realize the benefits here on their journey to um, their journey to commercialization. Um, we're developing some case studies and products at, uh, projects at the moment and testing the operating model and <clears throat> the key milestones. Um, so we're obviously building a social media presence at the moment, especially around our event and that, that will only grow. And obviously at the same time, we'll, we wanna build our agency and our partner profiles. Um, we, <clears throat> we've obviously got a board and independent chair. Uh, we've got a first energy challenge coming up and uh, we also want to grow the team over the next six to 18 months uh, to take on more people to cover more of the challenge areas and, and provide a more uh, a broader and um, more diverse team. Uh, so plans for the future are to develop two events per year, so to offer two two events per year. So um, we, we're looking at sort of offering um, public events around um, the four focus areas, perhaps with a different focus area each time. So we can draw in more innovators um, from a more diverse sort of background and cross-sectorally. Um, we want to become self-sufficient within three years. Uh, we want to expand our support network within and outside GM. And this is the ultimate one. Uh, we're, what we're looking to achieve here really is to, <clears throat> with the presence and the profile and with the partners uh, to expand our reach to um, not just necessarily outside GM, but perhaps even outside the UK to start creating a, a knowledge transfer network for best practice around carbon neutral innovations and deployment. Okay, so that's that's my section uh, complete. And I'd like to hand over now to our business development lead, uh, Dan Dickinson for part two. Morning, everyone. Um, we thought it'd be useful to sort of um, share a selection of some of the innovators we're working with just to give you a better idea of what we've been up to and what we will be doing so um as david mentioned we're our first challenge is focused on the decarbonization of heat so hopefully after our launch event we'll, a lot of the innovators we'll be working with will have a focus around that um but the ones we've we've picked up since we've started are from a more sort of diverse background so we'll just fly through a couple of these now so uh, the first company um they have a new wind turbine design so these are looking to place as you can see below on um street lighting uh, on oh, thanks david yeah on street lighting so um on busy roads so over 40 mile an hour roads the additional sort of vortexes created by passing traffic um can help increase the generation um and quite uniquely or at least as far as we've found so far um as a small startup they've already secured funding um for their own pilots so we're looking to bring at least one one between one and three pilots to greater manchester so we're helping the, the company approach the local authorities to assess the roads and and, and, and interest in the local area so um, each each pilot will hopefully over two years have up to 200 turbines on um, and the at least for the pilot anyway the local authority will be free to use the energy generated as they see fit so we think this is quite a good first one of the first projects if, if we can hopefully get bring it to the region um generate some you know it's, it's quite good for the general public as well to maybe understand exactly what we'll be doing um and I suppose the phase two of this one, as well as introductions to local authorities and finding the right pilot locations will be to find um, local installation teams that can actually do the do the hands on work. So I know we've got some good connections through the growth company into local businesses um, who may well be able to provide these services. Can we move on, David, please? So a uh, second company here is um, it's, it's really a, a two part project. So this is actually um, an international company They're based out of Japan and looking to set up in Greater Manchester specifically, but also to 
essentially prove their product in the UK energy market. So phase one is, is a very rapid response battery storage system. Um, so, you know, sort of uninterruptible power supply style. Um, so yeah, you can see below on the diagram there, hopefully you can see it. It's a really 20 millisecond uh, reaction time, short duration designed to kick in before backup power. So um, the innovator here is looking for an industrial site within Greater Manchester where they can deploy their solution and um, participate in balancing mechanisms and generate income through that. Um, I suppose the, the, the more innovative side is the phase two where whereas the, in phase one this might well be working with a diesel genset and they'd be looking to replace that diesel genset with a hydrogen fuel style system for the more longer term um, energy provision so that's probably you know in terms of our core aims of being innovative and and carbon neutral and net zero i think that's that's where we're most interested so at the moment where we've been helping them refine their project proposal um looking at the you know any regulation that they need to meet to operate in the uk coming from abroad and also to find an industrial site in the region So um, this next innovator is is Great Manchester based. Um, I've known them for some time uh, from my previous work at the business of Growth Hub, uh, supporting the low carbon sector SMEs in the region. So um, they manufacture and install um, energy efficient electric heating systems. So they where gas boilers aren't already in place, or they can work in combination with heat pumps as well. Um, They've been installing their products successfully in the region, in, in, sorry, in the UK, but um, would like to do more work in Greater Manchester. So a core market for them is social housing. So they're looking for introduction into social housing. And um, they're also developing their core products of radiators and heating cylinders into more of a smart home solution with, with more storage and more smart controls. So we're looking to help them on the R and D side with that as well, um, and as an SME, an ask of us as the agency is also to help increase their exposure, um, especially as they potentially position themselves as an alternative to heat pumps. So it's they're not they've not had that much exposure so far. So we'll see what we can do to help them on that angle there. And I think between ourselves as the agency and the partners there's a real uh, opportunity there to help promote smaller or newer businesses. Okay, so um, this one is a, a FinTech platform software. So really it's um, the end goal is local renewable, renewable energy as a service. So it's a platform that allows investors to essentially fund PV microgrids and the hardware and the installation uh, and receive a long-term uh, income from from that investment um, and then it's targeting initially social housing or potentially community energy groups um, who would then the homeowners would then um, have their bills reduced but also be operating um, off-grid or as close to off-grid as possible so um, these are from the UK that's right David isn't it outside GM but um, we're looking to bring them, bring them up to Manchester, Greater Manchester, and again, there's another social housing angle here, um, just for sort of economies of scale. Having you know, being able to operate across 100, 200 homes uh, is much easier to speak to one landlord than it would be to aggregate 200 homeowners. Um, and likewise, community energy groups have already done that hard work of building the community, so that's where they're looking for. So really two parts investment to scale a business and it would be to help fund pilots in the region so as you can see there's each the support we offer to each company is unique but there are some key themes here some key barriers we're already coming across um and it often is around the funds to scale whether that be to scale a business directly or to fund a pilot to demonstrate um the, the innovation in the real world Yeah, and another another domestic solution here. So um, it's individual 
radiator controls and thermostats, which on their own isn't completely innovative, but there's also a, um, a boiler diagnostic um, controller. So this can diagnose faults with, with any combi boiler system um, and report them back to maintenance companies, social housing providers. Um, so the idea is that at its core, it saves it saves costs on maintenance by you know having to send the engineers out multiple times. They get a notification of what's wrong. They can return straight with the parts. Um, it can also control the boiler temperature directly. So in the lab, I think it's it's estimated costs of, or efficiency savings of around twenty percent. So really, their next stage now is to is to test this at scale. So again, they're looking for a pilot across Greater Manchester, and they need funding this time which is, I think it's quite common for small businesses, so they need this pilot to be funded for them. Um, and the evidence and the data they get out of this pilot would, would set them up for Series A fundraising. Um, and here's just, just an overview, as you can see there, of some, some other technologies and innovations we're working with. Um, it is quite varied at the moment, um, and it's anything from, you know, one-man bands, spin outs from universities even that we that we've spoken to through to you know international companies with big budgets and you know larger presences so it's really interesting to us to see what strings we can draw from each of these what the needs are um so i think depending on the company the agency's involvement could be in depth or it could be light touch um but even if it's not something we can support directly, we're well aware of the interests of our partners, you know, including the universities. So it might be that we come across a company that is, you know, really needs to get into university, needs that R and D support, and isn't relevant for the, you know, support from myself and David for another couple of years. That's fine. We want to make those introductions and those partnerships. Similarly, if you know, if yourselves, people at the university are, are aware of innovators that maybe aren't quite ready for that directly we'd still love to hear about them and hear about their progress so um yeah i think what i'd like to encourage on the back of that is just um just keep in contact in an open forum because we want to be able to join the dots within manchester um rather than duplicate anyone's work or or keep keep any barriers that might be there right now okay so yeah, as David mentioned, um, we've got our launch event at the end of the month on the 28th. So this is sort of dual purpose. It's really to launch the agency publicly, even though, you know, we've been running along in the background for a good six months now. Um, and also to to launch our first challenge event, the decarbonisation um, of heat in non-domestic buildings. Um, so I think we'll send round, if you've not already seen it, we can send around a link to the Eventbrite if you're interested. But um, really, we, we're, we've got a good lineup of speakers um, to cover off the sort of national and Great Manchester perspectives. And then obviously the agency and our activities. Um, and we're also using Bruntwood, one of our partners, as a commercial landlord to really look at the challenges they're facing um, around the decarbonisation of heat. And hopefully that will give, um, you know, innovators, people who attend, you know, some insight into the challenges they're facing. And we're looking for responses so there's a call to action at the end of this is if you've got a solution you're working on you know hopefully in great manchester but anywhere in the uk that you think could help um get in touch so that's really the, the aim the aim of the event um and just to add that although decarbonization of heat is our focus for year one david's already gone through our four four areas we're not going to write off or not get in touch with innovators on those as well we still want to hear your ideas Thanks, Dan. Um, I think that's our last slide. So um, we didn't put one in here for Q and A, but we're, you know, we're ready for Q and A now. And um, <coughs> I'm going to stop presenting if that's okay, Carly, so that we can. Uh, yeah, that's great. Thanks, David. Thanks, David, and thanks, Dan, very much for uh, talking us through all of that. Um, and yeah, now we're we're ready for questions. Um, and I see I've got one hand up already. So please don't be please don't be shy. Pop your hand up, and we'll get a, a, a list of people that we're going to come to. Um, but I'll hand over to Paddy Hackett now, who I should say has also been very involved in the development right from the beginning of the agency. And he now sits on the tactical group for the Energy Innovation Agency, 
and I sit on the board. So if you have questions from a University of Manchester perspective, if you'd like to test them out with some uh, colleagues internally first, then Paddy or I are people to come to. Um, but of course, you can also go directly to Dan and David too. So uh, Paddy, what is your question? Uh, hi, Carly, thanks for that. Um, and thank you very much, Dan, David. Uh, even though I have had a lot of contact with yourselves, I still find that very interesting. So thanks for that presentation. Um, I was hoping, well, what do you want from the university, I think, is a, a question. And should um, we have any kind of innovations ourselves? Uh, how would you like to be approached uh, by university colleagues? Um, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Paddy. Um, OK, I'll go first then. Um, yeah, we would love to be involved um, with um, innovators and solutions that are coming out of the University of Manchester. Um, Anything that falls in those focus areas is, is of interest to us. And um, <clears throat> in terms of how, how we do that, um, you know, we've got, our, we've got our email addresses that are well known to people here. We're happy to share those afterwards. So, um, you know, perhaps if people want to approach us through, um, well, either directly or perhaps they could come through you, Patrick, whatever you suggest. Um, but we're, you know, we're very keen to, um, to get involved in, in any new kind of, even if it's a concept stage development, you know, happy to have a look and um, and and see how we can support. And obviously, um, you know, we're obviously a lot stronger together with um, the partners we've got in in focusing on the challenge ahead. Yeah, I'd, I'd just add that I think in you know, formal conversations before any, you know, if you want to make any formal referrals of of businesses or individuals over to us we're happy to have a chat to see if it fits with what we're doing or and where we think we can help um i think right now myself and david have been asking a couple of simple questions is you know what is the innovation how will it help greater manchester hit 2038 and and what do they need so i think if if you can a sentence on each of them will give us a good idea of whether we think we're able to support right now or, or potentially in the future um and i think of what we want from the university i think keeping us up to date of, of the university's activities, obviously University of Manchester, there's so much going on and um, support services, research services that, that would benefit um, companies in this space. I think a real challenge for us is we're trying not to, to pigeonhole ourselves with the type of companies we're looking at. You know, it could be a technology, it could be a service, it could be behavior change mo models, it could be be a financial model it could be you know we're trying to be open to ideas so um yeah we'd appreciate you know being kept up to date with with the endeavors that you're doing at the university yes thank you thanks um so i've got another question now from the very smartly dressed mike shaver's dog um mike is the director of the sustainable futures platform you're hosting the the seminar the webinar for us today so uh, mike what's your question yeah, so uh, again, thanks so much. Um, it's given me a lot to think about in terms of how that fits in with uh, obviously the interrelationships between the climate challenge in terms of energy, but then everything else that we're facing. And I guess I was thinking about this in terms of not just us pitching innovations that we're doing, but also that we have this massive unwieldy site and how from an operations standpoint can we uh, become a preferred location for pilots uh, so that we can trial some of these innovations from external people and internal uh, and really like drive down our university carbon targets while then enabling that to happen across the city. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks Mike. I mean, I would just add into that uh, before David and Dan maybe come back on it to say that um, colleagues from our estates team are coming to the launch event. Um, I wonder if somebody is able to put the launch event link in the chat, where that would be great if they could. Um, yeah. And yeah, so it would be great if we can use this to, to offer that um, opportunity for us as a, as a site. Um, you know, there's a lot of work going on in the university at the moment about making a decarbon, a pathway for decarbonisation of the whole campus. Um, you know, I don't think I'm giving too much away to say it's very expensive, uh, the plan that has been developed, and there are challenges about how that's going to be financed. So actually unlocking 
different funding streams and technologies that might drive down uh, cost of that transformation, like we should definitely be in that space. So I don't know, David, Dan, if you want to reflect on that too, the university as a, as a, as a site for innovation. Yeah, yeah, massively so. I think as far as what David and I are aiming for, we'll be biting your hand off for any opportunities to get uh, deployments of innovation at the university. I think it's twofold. We want we want that to be a core offer of the agency. So it's, I think we're already seeing it. it's, a, it's a barrier that innovators are facing and we want to be able to facilitate that. The real world demonstration, which is the, is the you know, it's the next step before deploying at scale. Um, so if that could be done with a partner, that's absolutely fantastic. And I suppose uh, like another interest for the university would be the question that you know, David's very keen on is what data are we gathering through these pilots? And, you know, you want to be aggregating that data beyond the individual innovator to see what, you know, the impact we're having and, and the potential it could have for the region. So I'm sure that might be of a further interest outside the estates team. Yeah, I, if I could just sort of highlight that. So I, I think that really means that two-way communication is important. So if Patty's going to go and be bringing those innovations from us, it's it's having uh, early warning, I guess, in terms of what those opportunities are uh, that you're building in those communities so that we can then identify the right people to consider that. So, yeah, no, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean... Mike. I would just add as well that, you know, I think we've talked a lot about like innovation in that kind of typical way that people tend to talk about innovation as being bits of technology. But there's so much innovation required in energy system transformation that's around financial model innovation, policy, regulation, innovation, maybe combined with new technologies. And the agency also offers colleagues in the university a way in to all of these partners um, that, are, that are committed to working in this space on those bigger questions. So, you know, if that's a large grant or a shared prosperity fund um, opportunity that you think we could maybe exploit, you know, it's it's offering quite a lot of different things, the agency, I think, and we've really got lined up for supporting innovators. And that's really important because it's a central part of what we're doing. But also in David's uh, overview, you know, there was these consortium grants that we could be looking at. And I think it is a real, it's a, it's a real kind of quick way to getting into key partners for projects that might um, be testing ideas that are maybe not just bits, you know, widgets and, and bits of tech, but a broader sense of energy system innovation. And um, the agency is open to supporting that as well. And I think offers a real opportunity for the university there too. Um, David, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, thanks, Carly. Yeah, I just I agree with everything you said there, and everything's been raised. <clears throat> it's I think it's re a really important point that you know the agency. <clears throat> yes, we can provide investment through the partners and um, you know the wider um, support network that we're building at the moment. But you know, in terms of funding, yeah, we have we've got a huge opportunity through the university partners um, to um, apply for you know national and even local competitions for for funding that can support r d projects and then you know but you know like dan uh, dan said it's really important that we we collect and gather the right data because we can use that not only to commercially uh, as part of the journey <coughs> commercialization journey for the innovator later on but we can also use that as a kind of mechanism for for almost in a way kind of lobbying for policy change and things that that are more supportive for for the applications um, that you know we're deploying these solutions in. Thanks. Um, I've got a question on the chat around what you think are the most kind of exciting areas of innovations that might come forward, one that might really make a, a difference. Do you have any particular areas that you are, are excited about or are you more agnostic than that? Uh, I'm not going to say perpetual motion machines but <laughs> um, yeah I mean the, the, the biggest challenge I think in my mind is the decarbonisation of heat and the buildings retrofit um, problem that we've got with some of the oldest or the oldest housing stock in Europe, for example, and 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 that's obviously a domestic, industrial, and and public sector building problem um, across the board. Um, so, you know, on that kind of focus area, decarbonisation of heat, to me, in my mind, you know, that's. <clears throat> as the largest challenge then you know solutions that excite me would be things around um perhaps combining uh, 
you know, mat energy efficient materials or maybe recycled materials, circular economy of materials into insulation solutions, um, applications for renewable energy on buildings or around buildings, um, you know, combining solar PV with buildings materials, things like that. Um, we know one no one solution is going to solve our problems, um, but um, having more options and and being able to apply those to, to each to each of these challenges, specifically decarbonisation of heat, is is only going to is it's only going to help us drive the economies of scale and the markets um, to to help deploy this in a larger you know larger in a larger way. Thanks, David. Um, I've got a question from Maggie. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for this talk. I'm quite new to this field, but very interested in, I'm quite easily excitable nowadays. And for example, the first one you showed, I thought that was like such a nice idea uh, of the ones on the traffic, you know, on the road. Um, so I suppose I, ha I have two questions, naive questions that way. I would like, my, in my role, I can access students. I would like to start exciting students about all this innovation. So you know you talked about your social media presence and so on. I don't know in terms of confidentiality when you have those innovators, whether you can easily pass on the information or not. But I certainly will, will send you an email after because I'd like to get people excited about those ideas and start changing their mind frame that yes, things are coming. And some inventors are probably just thinking things through now and they get more ideas perhaps from seeing yet more ideas. And then another question regarding finance is, do you have any idea at the moment if crowdfunding is actually something that, that could help as well with some of those innovations? Is that something done at the moment? Is there some options? Um, yeah, thanks for those questions, Maggie. Um, really interesting. Um, I'll try and take them in order then. So the first one, <clears throat> the, the the first energy innovator that we've, I mean, we've had to anonymize them for now, um, purely for where we are with the, you know, the stage of these projects and things. But, um, you know, we're we're happy to, to to sort of share details, and at, even if they're anonymized, we can share information, and, and you know, that can be a two way street. That's that's absolutely fine. And and once we get further with some of these projects, and we've got um, they're in more in the public domain in terms of us securing pilot projects um, and uh, agreements with with stakeholders then you know we can share a lot more information and and <coughs> that way um, in terms of finance and, and funding yeah I mean we we do have like Dan's mentioned we've got um, innovators that are looking for seed funding and others looking for series A funding um, but some of those innovators themselves are looking at crowdfunding and I think you've hit a really important point I think Crowdfunding is an area that, um, you know, potentially we, we could get involved with um, to, to build support for, for, for projects that um, potentially, you know, struggle with investment or fundraising through through grant funding. Yeah, just to, to add, Maggie, I think that it's a really important role for us going forward is to be a sort of voice for the innovators we're working with, but also really we're here to shout about what we're achieving, Greater Manchester. So, you know, hopefully post event and as we you know if we can make some concrete strides to get that first innovation that you saw um, to Manchester we'll certainly be promoting that as far and wide as we can um, like an example in terms of the the, the crowdfunded it's, no, it's nothing to do with us right now but there's a platform called Abundance Investments um, and they're sort of crowdsourcing for maybe more ethical projects some of them even council led or sort of environmental so there's there's examples out there from from how it's been done already for, for for new startups in this sort of field great thanks um and another question from tim sorry hi um thanks i'm just just a, a quick point ready to say when thanks very much for this it looks really exciting um and i can see lots of opportunities coming on the crowdfunding note i've got a little topic at the moment looking specifically at the suitability and kind of factors for, for and against crowdfunding for smart local energy systems so it would be great for me if i got the chance to talk to the um the fintech platform developer looking at social housing microgrids and um, that's exactly the kind of thing looking to talk to people trying to do that to see so what works and what doesn't for them 
Um, so maybe I'll, I'll get in touch with you after the event, maybe about that. Yeah, very much. That would be we'd we'd love we'd love that, Tim. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Thanks. Um, again, like this particular innovator, like like many sort of startups, is 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 you know at that kind of not death valley stage, but that you know they need to secure sort of crowdfunding, a bit more investment, if you like, seed seed funding, so that they can um, you know reach reach their targets over the next twelve months and, and and get you know get a pilot project in the sand and then and then. You know, obviously they've got they've overcome a lot of their risks. Okay, thanks. Okay, that's great. I'll be in touch. Great. Okay. Uh, I don't think I have any more hands, so I'll give you a moment. Just if there's, if you're thinking about asking a question and you you just aren't quite sure, go for it. Pop your hand up. Why not? Um, and then I'll. If we don't get one of those, I'll just give David and Dan. If there's anything you feel you haven't covered that you'd like to say, I'll give you a moment to say that. Um, and if not, we will wrap up. So I'm not getting any more little hands coming up. Um, so David, Dan, is there anything else you'd like to say or to, to wrap us up? Oh, we've got one question from Maggie. Go on, Maggie. Sorry, uh, you may not know. I just, I just have those photovoltaic paints that I think were probably developed more in Australia or something. Is that, is that a thing? Because that really gets my mind going, the photovoltaic paints. Is there something going on there? Is that something we can start dreaming of? Do you know? <laughs> uh, thanks, Maggie. Um, that's a new one on me. I knew there were photovoltaic voltaic, uh, materials, building materials, but uh, it doesn't surprise me. I think from my understanding of, of solar is that generally the, the thinner the, the film or the application, the less efficient it is. But that's not to say that it doesn't work because obviously with the paint if you're covering a large enough surface area then you, you know it's um it can still absorb enough energy to create a reasonable amount of electricity so i'd say actually we'd be interested in um <laughs> in having a look at that if you if you're able to email us afterwards sorry maybe i misunderstood so no I, I hope i understood I, I knew it was linked to building so perhaps i, I right. misunderstood the term paint but i look into it again right. and do something if i find it yeah, yeah, definitely interested. I know there's a thin, thin film technology that you can apply on roofs, um, which is literally a rollout sheet, um, and it's it's quite an interesting uh, innovation. But it's it's kind of uh, less it, less energy efficient than than the kind of standard solar panels, but uh, still still interesting application, definitely. Okay, thanks, uh, David. Dan, is there anything you want to say before we wrap up? Um, no, probably just to re-emphasise to, um, yeah, don't keep in touch. And um, there's not a silly question if you want to understand who we're working with or what we can do. So um, we, we, we prefer to be aware of everything than, or, than, than wait, waiting for the perfect company. So Because we don't know what that looks like, if we're honest. Thanks, Dan. Hey, guys, will you be sharing these slides or will you make them available to share? Definitely. Yeah, thanks, Paddy. We'll share those. Um, and just last point for me I was going to make is that, you know, obviously on our journey to um, <clears throat> carbon neutrality and decarbonising the city region and beyond, it, you know, we're going to need innovations that are, that are both disruptive and, it, you know, provide incremental changes. It, it's all part and parcel of the same solution, you know, if, and, um, you know, please keep us up to date, like Dan said, of anything that you think can make a difference and you know we'd love to hear from you and um i think over time as we build the pipeline and and and, and our innovator um, database that you know there'll also be more opportunities for business to business to business opportunities between innovators as well that hopefully we can identify and and and, and help solve the challenges that way as well Great, thanks. Thank you very much to David and Dan for talking with us today. Thank you to the Sustainable Futures platform for hosting the webinar. Um, and I'll just remind you that there's the sign up link in the chat there for the launch event and that first challenge area for the Energy Innovation Agency later this month. And there's also the link shared for future Sustainable Futures platform webinars. So um, two things to follow up on there if you're interested. Thank you all very much for your time today. Um, and do come to Paddy and myself or David and Dan if you want to talk more about the Energy Innovation Agency. Thanks very much.